welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review today I'm going to look at another pen company that is a first for me opus 88 it's a company from Taiwan that has been making interesting and unique designs since 1988 and was founded by pen designer and maker named Michael Su opus 88 made a model called the Omar which is very popular and named after the film star Omar Sharif you might remember him from Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago. This is a new model named Bella, named after, nope, not Bella Lugosi, unfortunately. But just as Lugosi was a big star, this is a big pen. It's also a Japanese eyedropper. What's a Japanese eyedropper, you may well ask? Well, let's find out right now. <music> So you order stuff from China and it takes uh, weeks and weeks and weeks and usually comes in a small plastic bag, a little bubble wrap, and it goes in your mailbox. But then you order things from Amsterdam and it takes weeks and weeks and weeks and comes in a huge yellow box. Let's see what's in this box from DHL. Waffle So the first thing is some Jack Frost from Diamine. Uh, this is part of their Inkvent calendar last year, I believe. And uh, I ordered this to go along with my previous pen and asked Dios to hold this ink and uh, send it with the pen so I could combine shipping. Well, he hold, held the ink uh, for my next purchase, so which is this pen. So this ink does not match this pen that's coming up. It's supposed to match my Leonardo Salt. This is what I'm looking for. Always nicely wrapped from Apple Bomb. And we have an Opus 88 Genuine eyedropper fountain pen Bella made in Taiwan the red sleeve comes off opus 88 fine writing instruments since 1977 magnetic flap yes da, 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 da. the pen opus fine writing instruments eyedropper fountain pen here's the eyedropper I don't know that I need that and we see the pen very interesting so we shall clean this pen out and give it a try so what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. First, let's talk Opus. There is little information on this relatively new pen company. I've reached out to Michael Sue, the founder of Opus 88, to ask a few questions, and he's given me a couple of answers very quickly. The company was formed in 1977, as it says here on the box. However, the name Opus 88 refers to the first year Opus began making pens under their own name rather than as an OEM supplier to other companies. Opus 88 is based in Taiwan, and I'll not make the same lazy mistake I made previously by calling it China. Taiwan is the Republic of China, not to be confused with the People's Republic of China. To simplify a very complex issue, I will just call Taiwan, Taiwan. That saves us having to do a history lesson going back to 1949 and Chiang Kai-shek. The Opus in Opus 88 seems to stem from Michael Su's 
interest in bringing all forms of materials and artistic processes to the production of his pens. The word opus is usually a reference to a collection of musical compositions, as in the opus numbers on the compositions of Beethoven. Derived from the Latin word for work, opus can refer to artistic work as in an artist's magnum opus or great work. The company produces unique fountain pens in at least seven different models. The Bella, Demonstrator, Fantasia, Flow, Coloro, Omar, and Picnic. David Parker of Fig Boot on Pens mentioned in his review of the Omar that they had some difficulty in coming up with a name for the model and one of the founders or backers of Opus 88 had been asked who his favorite film actor was and that was Omar Sharif of Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago fame. So the pen was named Omar. That made me curious about this model, the Bella. It isn't spelled with two L's and so is not Italian for beautiful. Thinking about film stars, the only famous film star named Bella I was aware of was Bella Lugosi. So I sent a note to Michael Sue asking the question. I would think it would be very cool if this blood red pen were named after the actor that played the most famous vampire of them all in Count Dracula, especially this close to Halloween. But I just received an answer from Michael and the pen is named Bella for beautiful. The word is in Esperanto, not Italian. And so only one L. So that answers that. On to the pen. This is one big pen, folks. You're going to need a bigger pouch. Let's look at it right away against another pen so you can get the scale of this. Four! Will you go to the end of the pulpit, please? What? Will you please go to the end of the pulpit. What? Four! I need to have something in the foreground to give it some scale. Four, grab my ass! Here is a Pilot Metropolitan next to the Opus 88 Bella. You can see how thick and long this pen is. The acrylic resin is really fascinating. There's no pearlescence or chatoyancy to it, but the variety of colors and swirls is endlessly interesting. This is the red model, and there is a blue model as well. And Obus has just announced a new yellow, green, brown model Bella called the Autumn just the other day. Let's talk about the color for a moment before we get to the parts and features. This red model has swirls of red, yellow, orange, brown, green, and cream. And the creamy white is also a very nice warm match. The only odd piece is the black enamel clip. I would have liked to have seen a dark brown enamel clip there. The Bella is what is referred to as a Japanese eyedropper. It is an eyedropper fountain pen that has a rod inside with a stopper that will close off the section, much in the way vacuum fillers do, like the Visconti Homo sapiens. We will look at that in a moment. This glass eyedropper is included with the pen, but I've been using my handy spring syringe filler instead. Very useful little device. From the top, we see a rounded acrylic finial in dark brown then the band of cream white acrylic before the black enamel ring which attaches the black enamel clip. The top of the clip has Opus 88 printed in orange letters and the clip is very springy and very useful and a nice width which balances the large girth of this pen nicely. There is a plastic knob attached under the clip that touches the acrylic. Mine's a little wonky in that it's a little bit sideways, uh, but it is solid. And the fact that this is softer plastic touching that acrylic rather than the metal is a good thing. The cap tapers up to its widest spot right about here and then tapers down to the end of the cap. There's a very small step down to the red clear acrylic ink window on the top of the barrel. The barrel is straight and that is straight just for a few millimeters and then it tapers up to the rest of the barrel which tapers up to its fattest point right here and then tapers away again to another cream band which is the top of the blind cap. You see the separation there. 
then tapers on a little bit shallower an angle to the dark brown rounded end finial of the blind cap. The blind cap unscrews right here and the seam between the two is non-existent. The cap unscrews with a surprising one, two, three, and three and a tiny bit amazing full turns. This may not be a big deal for some, but I find it about a half a turn over tolerable. I find myself trying to pull the cap off while I'm opening it before I actually get to the last bit of the thread. I have taken to trying to spin the cap out to make it a little bit quicker. Those three full turns translate into at least five or six full movements when you're uncapping as most people cannot make a full rotation of the cap in practice. So if you grab the pen one, two, three, four, five. So that's five rotations, which I get about three quarters of the way around each time I make a movement. You'd get carpal tunnel syndrome just from capping and uncapping this sucker. Ah, ah, Kyle! <laughs> Kyle! Dude, what's wrong? Carpal tunnel! Carpal tunnel! <laughs> oh, Jesus, he's got it bad! Quick, we need Ben Gang! You certainly don't want to be using this for jotted notes at a meeting. The cap comes off eventually to reveal a nice sized section of the same wonderful acrylic and a number six size steel nib. The nib is by Peter Bach, according to Michael Sue. That was the second question I asked him. This section is of unique shape, which is very pleasant in the hand. It tapers down from here and then has a small flare up towards the nib and then is rounded nicely. Taking a close-up look at the nib, we see some very light laser engraving of Opus 88 and the geometric design of the company logo and a B, a B for broad. And there is the plastic feed. The section unscrews to access the ink chamber, which holds around 3.5 milliliters of ink. You can see the piston rod inside the chamber. This, of course, is the Japanese eyedropper. And as I understand it, this type of eyedropper with the shutoff valve has been around for a long time. It may look like a vacuum filler or a piston filler, but this piston does not draw up ink. And yes, I tried it. I thank you. Those of you who have experience of eyedropper fountain pens might have experienced one of the downsides to having this much ink capacity in a pen, burping and leaking. With such large capacity, the pen is bouncing around in your pocket some ink can be expelled from the pen, but more often it is the result of changing volume of air in the pen due to outside air pressure changes or the pen heating up because it's against your skin or under your desk lamp. This happens mostly when the pen's reservoir isn't completely full as air inside the ink chamber expands due to being on an aircraft or the heating of the air from contact with your skin or the environment. The expanding air pushes ink out through the feed and into your pocket. This shutoff piston alleviates much of that issue by having the piston here plug the hole there in the back of the section. The only ink that will be affected by air pressure changes or temperature changes will be the ink that's still remaining in the feed and section. And of course, as an eyedropper, there is an O-ring, a silicone O-ring right there which seals that off, but I always put a little bit of silicone grease on those threads as well, just for safety. And if you routinely tilt the pen nib up before you close the piston, you will have drained a lot of that ink out anyway. So it's a very clever system. You just need to remember to open the piston when you want to write to allow the ink to flow, or the feed will be starved of ink. There is a step milled into the cap that lines up with the section and therefore seals the nib and feed when the pen is capped, which helps the pen from drying out. The cap posts, not that deeply, but securely. And although it doesn't severely back weight this pen, I feel it is a bit unwieldy in the hand 
to write with posted. It becomes comically long at about 175 millimeters. In the hand unposted, the pen is just simply marvelous. This bulbous part of the barrel fills my hand and the section is perfect. The threads here can't be felt and I can write with this pen for hours and hours and hours without fatigue. This pen retails for about $120 US, but I got mine for $103 US or $135 Canadian at Applebaum. Plus, you can get an extra 10% off from Applebaum by simply typing the word friend into the coupon code field as you check out. And if you check the box tune and smooth, Apple Bomb will tune your nib before they ship it. That is what I did for this Bella. It did write OK and it was obvious that it had been tested, but it required just a little more tuning to make it write without flaws. I'll talk about that when I get to the writing sample. But for now, let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Opus 88 Bella with a Leonardo Furore Grande, a Fuliwen Ancient Civilizations, a Jinhao 159, and a Moonman M6. Now let's look at them posted. So here they are posted, and I think I'm going to call this the Irwin Allen Collection of Fountain Pens because it really is the land of the giants. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Opus 88 Bella, and it is a broad steel nib. And the ink today is Robert Oster Astorquiza Rot and I forgot to show the swatches this is the swatch for Astorquiza Rot Robert Oster along with some diamine ancient copper and here is Monteverde Canyon Rust Let's check the wetness. This pen is very wet, very nice, and it is very, very smooth. As the line variation, that is no pressure, and that is a little bit of pressure. As you can see, the nib is springy, and you can get a little bit of line variation. It's already starting very broad, so it doesn't have much space to go, but that's very springy and soft and very nice and surprising for a steel nib. So the nib is very smooth with just a hint of feedback. As I mentioned, it was tuned by Applebaum Although it did write well when it came out of the box, um, it did display just a hint of baby's bottom on the top part of my downstrokes. I stroked the pen down about five or six straight times on some 8,000 grit micro mesh, and then polished it with a few downstrokes and figure eights on some 12,000 grit micro mesh, and now it writes beautifully. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder or binder line chart, it says it is a 0.8 millimeter line, which uh, on the chart comes out to a western broad or a Japanese 
broad plus just sort of slightly bigger than a Japanese broad and our writing sample and reverse writing you see it's catching all over the place so not something I want to do I could probably smooth that out but I don't reverse write my pens anyway and some quick writing so you can see the feed keeps up very nicely but I'm still having some issues with downstrokes now and then with this pen as you can see so I'm going to work on a little bit more so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen well it's no secret that I like big pens said big pens not big pens I like big the size of them impresses me. this pen does not only look impressive it feels wonderful in the hand the barrels curves and girth make it fill my palm and I can write with it comfortably for hours that is also due to the section in fact all of the curves of this pen are extremely well thought out and designed in fact from the flare at the section where it tapers up to the ink window gets much much thicker in the middle and thinner again at the other end that is my theory and it is mine all brontosauruses are thin at one end much much thicker in the middle and then thin again at the far end <laughs> that is my theory it is mine and belongs to me and i own it and what it is too well and this theory of yours appears to have hit the nail on the head <laughs> and it's mine yes all of those curves just flow the way this pen fits in my hand is reminiscent of my other favorite curvy pen the pen bbs 323 the 323 is also an eyedropper but doesn't have an ink window doesn't have a shutoff valve and it doesn't post now I don't write with the Bella posted but in a pinch when I don't want to just lay the cap down it posts you hear that long at pen BBS just saying oh, I love the shutoff valve for two reasons one the obvious for safety from burping and leaking but two because even though eyedroppers are great for a large ink capacity there's no way to prime that feed when you want it either when you've just filled the pen and you have to wait for the ink to run down into the section or when you just need to give the feed a push to get more ink flowing that's the really convenient thing about converters just give it a little twist and you pump some ink into the feed with the Bella just turn the pen nib down open the valve and while holding the nib down close the valve again and what you're doing is allowing more ink to flow into the feed and then you're pushing that spigot basically closed again which forces a little bit more ink through the feed and it works I like that it posts in a pinch when you need it I absolutely adore the acrylic swirls and colors on this pen the clip is sturdy and usable the nib is wet and juicy and writes beautifully with some very surprising bounce to it as I said there's a lot to like here the only real problem I have with the Bella is how many freaking turns it takes to get it open in practice one two three four five it's five movements and I'm always stopping just before it gets to that last turn but I'm going to live with it because I adore this pen and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say 
Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.